from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 21st, 2019. Some 6,000 Palestinians gathered at the Gaza security fence today with hundreds taking part in violent riots throwing explosive devices and rocks at Israeli soldiers. There was also an attempt to breach the security fence. IDF forces responded with tear gas and live fire when absolutely necessary. The Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry said that seven Palestinians were injured. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton will arrive in Israel this weekend just ahead of trilateral talks with Israeli and Russian counterparts. Bolton will meet on Sunday with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and then take part in talks on Monday with Israeli National Security Advisor Meir Ben Shabbat and Russian National Security Advisor Nikolai Petrushev. They will speak about regional issues, presumably including threats from Iran and Iran's entrenchment in Syria. Netanyahu called the meeting very important, unique and unprecedented. The following day on Tuesday, the U.S. co-hosted conference in Bahrain begins. The country, which does not have diplomatic ties with Israel, invited six Israeli media outlets to attend the gathering, which will focus on the economic aspect of the yet-to-be-unveiled U.S. peace plan for Israel and the Palestinians. Several Israeli private citizens were also invited and are attending, among them reportedly Director General of the Sheba Medical Center, Professor Yitzhak Kreis. An incident reported by several media outlets as being anti-Semitic is now being said to have been an accident and not a targeted anti-Semitic attack. A 79-year-old Jewish woman was hit in the head on Tuesday with a metal ball outside a Jewish center and synagogue in Paris, and she suffered cranial damage. We had not reported about the incident on JBS this week as many details were unclear. The National Bureau for Vigilance Against Anti-Semitism said today, after investigating, that a young boy dropped the ball from an upper floor apartment. The parents discovered what had happened and called the synagogue's administrators to deeply apologize. New Zealand's Minister for Immigration has apologized over a map posted on an official government website which omits the State of Israel. Minister Ian Lees Galloway wrote to Ambassador Yitzhak Gerberg, I can assure you that the fact sheet did not reflect New Zealand government policy. He said the map was clearly inaccurate and did not label the State of Israel as it should. The fact sheet with the map was offered on the website giving information about Palestinian immigrants to New Zealand. It names the entire country as Palestine and identifies East Jerusalem as the designated capital of the state of Palestine. It also states that Israel has caused massive repression of Palestinians, making no mention of incidents of Palestinian terrorism. Gerberg had complained to Galloway about the website, writing the official paper of New Zealand incites hatred of the state of Israel as well as anti-Semitism. It has since been removed. The U.S. Department of Education is looking into a conference on Gaza co-sponsored by two North Carolina universities after allegations that the gathering was anti-Israel. The Raleigh News and Observer reported that North Carolina Republican Representative George Holding called for the investigation of the conference, which was held this past March, co-sponsored by Duke and UNC Chapel Hill, after he saw reports of severe anti-Israeli bias there, including an offensive music video and anti-Semitic rhetoric. The Louis D. Brandeis Center, which monitors such activity on college campuses, said the conference, among other things, minimized Hamas's role in perpetuating the crisis in Gaza and that panels at the conference denied Israel's right to exist, brandishing it a settler colonialist entity while negating the enduring legacy of Jewish life in the region. New England Patriots football team owner Robert Kraft received the Genesis Prize in Jerusalem yesterday, where he said he would use the $1 million plus another $20 million of his own money towards a new project, the Foundation for Social Media Messaging Against Anti-Semitism. Kraft said, my vision is to work to end the violence against Jewish communities, to counter the normalization of anti-Semitic narratives that question Israel's right to exist, disguised as part of legitimate debate on campuses and in the media. 
An Israeli company presented what is thought to be the world's first all-electrical plane at the Paris Air Show this week. Eviation presented the Alice, a small prop plane operating entirely on battery power. The company said it is the world's first all-electric commuter aircraft. Test flights are still needed for the Alice to receive certification by the FAA, but there is already interest in the aircraft, including from American regional airline Cape Air. Well, today is International Yoga Day, and Tel Aviv hosted a gathering of yoga enthusiasts and practitioners from Israel and around the world at an event yesterday hosted by the Indian Embassy, along with the municipality and the Ministry of Sports and Culture. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, June the 21st at 7 o'clock, Kabbalat Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue, followed by services from Central Synagogue in New York City. At 9, it's the film My 100 Children, followed by Musica with God Elbaz. And coming up right after this newscast, a discussion of modern orthodoxy and then a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, June the 21st, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader. Shabbat Shalom.